This is Alex and Tom's Hardware, and I'm here checking out the new LG G4, which is the LG's successor to the uh, G3. At first glance, uh, the G4 doesn't look that much different than the uh, G3. It's a similar shape and size, though the uh, G4 is a little bit taller. It's 148.9 millimeters, and the G3 was 146.3. It's also a little wider at uh, 76.1 versus 74.6, so it looks like maybe the bezels are slightly larger on the G3. Um, as you can see on the front, I don't know if you can see in the camera, there's a nice sort of um, uh, sort of texture under the glass uh, outside of the screen area, which uh, is quite attractive. Um, the screen is the uh, same size as the uh, G3, which is 5.5 inches, and still is QHD. But uh, LG is calling this new display um, a new IPS quantum display. Uh, let me just wake it up. As you can see, the double tap to wake up is still there and unlock the screen. Um, it's supposed to be around 25% brighter, 50% uh, better contrast ratio, and 20% uh, color gamut. And it's very bright. Like I'm at 50% auto brightness. And if I bring the screen up to maximum brightness, you can really see that the screen is uh, certainly blowing out the camera's exposure here. So it's definitely uh, a lot brighter than the screen on the, um, the G3. Uh, and the, the colors also look to be quite a bit more saturated. So obviously we'll have to do some testing to see how this uh, screen performs in comparison to the best screen on the market right now, which is uh, Samsung's screen in the Galaxy S6. But uh, uh, first impressions are pretty good. Um, flipping over the back, you can see um, the trademark rear um, volume and power buttons, something that LG started to do on the G2. Um, and at first, you might uh, find it a little awkward to use these buttons on the back, but once you actually start using one of LG's phones, you'll quickly get used to using your index finger to control the volume and power. And having the buttons moved on the back does allow to have thinner bezels on the side of the phone. So the screen to, body, screen to body ratio of LG's phones is some of the best on the market. Even though it's a 5.5 inch screen device, it's still quite compact. Now, the genuine leather back is one of the big selling features or the big new features of the uh, G4's design. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, uh, access to a leather model that we can use for this video, though we have access we have actually seen them. So this is one of the plastic uh, versions. This is the gray back. It's also going to be available in white or gold if you look at, opt for the plastic back. Um, here are some images though of the uh, still images of the different uh, colors available um, in the leather back version. So we have brown, black, red, yellow, beige, and sky blue. So the black leather model we've actually had a chance to play with. It felt really good in the hand. The surface feel was very nice. So um, we were quite uh, impressed by the look of it. Um, not sure if I like the brown one myself, but I do actually think the black is quite attractive looking. Obviously, we'll have to see how uh, the leather back model holds up after time once we get our hands on it to, check, to test it out. Um, looking at the plastic back, you can see there's some sort of a geometric design. So there's a little bit of a different feel to the back. It looks, makes it look a little bit different than the back of the, uh, of the G3. But again, it's still a plastic back. So um, myself, and I'm sure many of you will probably end up putting this in a case anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Um, on the back here, we can also see one of the other killer features of the G4, which is the new um, camera. It's... Um, got a 16-megapixel uh, camera that uses LG's uh, own Inatec, uh, LG Inatec sensor. It's 40% bigger than the 30-megapixel sensor that came on the G3. It's a, a half 0.6-inch uh, uh, sensor, so it's actually a fairly large image sensor for a smartphone, which will give you good performance in low light. Uh, in conjunction with this great new sensor, we have... Uh, uh, super wide aperture for the lens. It's f1.8, uh, which is actually uh, the widest aperture available in any smartphone And that should also improve low light performance uh, LG says that uh, It's uh, that aperture allows the lens to be 80% uh, brighter than the average smartphone camera lens Which is quite an impressive uh, stat um, 
LG has also improved the optical image stabilization. So uh, starting um, on uh, the uh, G2, uh, they started including OIS on their phones, one of the uh, few smartphone companies to offer that on their smartphone lenses. Though this year we have seen more devices come with optical image stabilization. Uh, the OIS 2.0 on the G4 uh, has a uh, more degrees of stabilization so on the x and y axis uh, it has uh, two degrees of stabilization and it also includes a third z axis stabilization too which should allow you to uh, use the phone uh, in lower light and more challenging conditions and um, also will be great for video stabilization um, you can also see some of the sensors on the back of the phone here so um, to the uh, left of the lens, we have the sensor for the laser autofocus, the super fast autofocus system that has been carried over from the G3. And on the right hand side here, we can see this new sensor, which is called the color spectrum sensor. Uh, what LG says this does is analyzes both RGB light and the reflected infrared light and allows the camera um, software to adjust the white balance for much more accurate color rep representation in your images. So if I go into the camera mode here, we can see one of the other big features which uh, is utilizing some of the APIs that uh, Google has included um, in Lollipop is there's actually a new manual mode. So when you're in manual mode here, you can adjust everything. You can adjust uh, the white balance, you can have uh, manual focus control, uh, you can adjust the exposure, uh, ISO, and you can see the uh, um, G4 is able to go up to ISO 2700 in manual mode. Let's go back down to ISO 100 here. Uh, you can adjust the shutter speed. Uh, you can go all the way up to 30 seconds of shutter speed, um, uh, up to uh, 1 6 thousandth. So there's a wide variety of shutter speeds available for capturing uh, fast motion or doing some cool effects where you have the phone the tripod and you capture like light trails and things like that um, you can also shoot in raw so i don't know if you can see here but you can turn on raw or jpeg mode so this is one of the few uh, uh, android phones that can capture images in raw which if you're um, going to be editing these images in something like lightroom and want to have more control over the final results uh, shooting in RAW is a, a great way to do that. So um, you can see it's running uh, uh, the familiar uh, sort of LG style uh, skin over Android Lollipop. It runs Android Lollipop 5.1. Uh, obviously, the same sort of square icons that LG used on their um, on the G3 skin is here. And this is a Korean model, so you can see a few Korean. Uh, software things though the uh, software UI seems to be a lot smoother uh, not as laggy as it was and obviously being lollipop it in incorporates uh, some of the new uh, material design language and the new lollipop notifications uh, we haven't had much time to play with the software so we can't say much about um, it but definitely when we do a full review we'll go over that in more detail um, now this uses the new Snapdragon 808 uh, SoC um, before this was released, there was some speculation to, as to what uh, uh, SOC that the, um, the G4 would use. Uh, there are, the previous model that LG released uh, used the Snapdragon 810, which is actually Qualcomm's flagship chip. But um, as you probably know from reading reviews of the HTC One 9, um, and even some reviews of the G Flex 2. The 810 is actually quite a hot chip and has had a lot of problems of overheating. So it looks like uh, this time around, um, LG decided to, to get something a little bit less powerful um, in the G4 to give it a better overall performance for mainstream users. Now, CPU-Z is uh, identifying it as a Qualcomm Snapdragon 808, but it actually says the architecture is Crate, which is not actually true. The um, 808 uh, is a hexa-core chip, um, and it uses um, Cortex uh, CPU. So it has two Cortex A57 chips, which are the higher performance chips that run at 1.8 gigahertz. And it has four Cortex A53 chips, which uh, run at 1.4 gigahertz. And it's a big little architecture, so that means uh, for more demanding tasks, uh, they run on the higher performance chips. Um, and then when you have a less demanding task, it runs on the low performing chips. 
um, the lower speed chips, which should actually improve battery life. It has an Adreno 418 GPU, and I guess that's probably the only one area of concern with the uh, Snapdragon 808. Um, the 418 on paper is going to be less powerful than the 830 found in the Snapdragon 810, which is actually a very powerful uh, GPU. And it's even going to be less powerful than the 820, sorry, the 420 GPU found in last year's Snapdragon um, 805. So it'll be interesting to see when we get around to doing some uh, performance testing on the 808 to see how that GPU stacks up with compared, when compared to its competition. Another thing is uh, 808 doesn't support DDR4 memory, it only supports DDR3. Uh, will that impact performance? We're not sure. It has 32 gigs of internal storage and it has a micro SD slot. And of course, um, as we've mentioned in our, some of our previews, the uh, G4, like the G3, uh, has a removable back, which is a feature that uh, many 2015 uh, smartphones have decided to get rid of, um, most notably Samsung. So we can see uh, the SIM card slot here and the micro SD slot. And then we have a 3000 milliamp removable battery, which again is another big feature that uh, some of the, the, the latest um, smartphones from other OEMs have decided to, to uh, get rid of. So yeah, bringing into the camera here, we can see we have a Galaxy S6 Edge uh, with the sealed back, non-removable battery. Uh, the battery is actually smaller as well, and there's no micro SD slot. So um, LG is claiming with this 3000 milliamp battery, with some improvements to the screen's power efficiency, and the new uh, uh, Snapdragon 808 uh, SoC, which is supposed to be very power efficient, that they're saying this, this, the G4 actually should have better battery life than the G3, which is going to be quite nice because um, like the S6 and the HTC One M9 and some of the new flagships this year actually have worse battery life than their predecessors. So if LG can pull it off and actually give the G4 better battery life than its uh, predecessor, that's going to be quite an achievement. So as you can see, uh, just quickly having a little quick comparison between the two phones. Um, I'm not going to bother putting the back on right now, just show you from the front. You can see that the uh, G4 is quite a bit bigger than the uh, S6. This is the S6 Edge. But of course, the Samsung's phone has a 5.1 inch screen, and this is a 5.5 inch screen. Of course, Samsung has moved to this glass and metal construction, and even though the edges of the G4 here look like metal, they're actually still plastic. So I guess from a, a sort of materials perspective, I think the lack of metal on the G4 is probably my biggest disappointment. Definitely uh, the S6 is a very beautiful and well-crafted device, but the lack of removable battery and lack of a micro SD slot is quite uh, a negative. Um, if I bring uh, my um, Note 4 into the scene here, you can see that the Note 4 is still quite a bit bigger. Of course, the Note 4 is a 5.7 inch screen, but the Note 4 does have a removable battery, does have a micro SD slot, and has a nice metal frame around the side. So I definitely think the Note 4 is a great phone, but um, the camera on the, uh, the G4 is gonna obviously outperform it, and the new SoC will outperform it too. So, oh, actually I forgot. When I took out the battery, I turned off the G4. So. This has been a quick look at the new LG G4 smartphone. Um, it's gonna be available um, uh, late May, early June in the US, and it's gonna be coming to Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and US Cellular. And it's also gonna be available in Canada in June on Bell, Rogers, Telus, Videotron, and Win Mobile. While LG has not announced any pricing, we're probably gonna expect it to be the same price as most other of the current flagship phones, so probably around $200 on a two-year contract, and probably around you know, $650 to $700 uh, outright. Once again, this has been a quick look at the new LG G4. This is Alex from Tom's Hardware, and thanks for watching.